Hey, welcome back everyone. So we're going to do uh, some work on the Yelp Camp application. This is the state of the application after you've taken the entire uh, Web Developer Bootcamp course. This is the Yelp Camp project, the last project from the course. And throughout the project, there was a feature where when you visited a campground, there was a button to allow you to leave a review if you weren't logged in. And when you clicked on it, it would make you log in and then it would actually redirect you back to that campground where you would now be logged in you could leave a review in the form that was visible so I think the solution at some point was just to remove that button and the user would have to log in and then they would see the form but if you want to continue using that feature uh, a lot of people still have that code in their app and they're finding that when they go to log in it's not redirecting them back to that campground it redirects them back to all the campgrounds on the index page which is not the desired behavior. And so to fix it, what, what's going on, the issue is that in the latest version of Passport, which is the package from NPM that allows us to uh, handle the authentication of our user, the way that it's handling sessions, the way that it stores information about the logged in user, it has changed. Basically, it used to be that when a guest visited the website, a session was created. And then when they logged in, that session was updated but it kept the original session ID. And now for security purposes, because of a certain type of attack where someone could essentially go and log in after you've left, uh, like let's say you visit a page and you log in and you leave and it still has the session information, they could like re-log in or whatever, but they maintain that session ID and that would give them access to your bank account or your Facebook or whatever. And so in this case, the solution for that passport module was to update the session ID when a user logs in, which is great for security, but then it breaks our implementation for the feature that I just described, where a user can try to leave a review, it asks them to log in, when they log in, it redirects them back to the campground in question. So the solution is what I'm gonna show you in this video. First, we need to put that feature back in where that button exists. So if you were to run the application in its most recent form basically download Colt's code from the end of the course or use your code if you finish the course when you go to the campgrounds index and you view a campground there's no button here to leave a review if you're logged in you see a form but what we want is a button that says leave a review when you're not logged in it takes you to the login page you log in with your credentials and then it redirects you back to this campground where you can then leave a review so let's go ahead and add that button if you already have that button, of course, you can skip this step, but you might want to pay attention to how I'm doing this because the button is not going to behave the way that it used to. So inside of views, campground, show.ejs, we have an if statement in here with our EJS syntax that says if current user. That basically just means if a user is logged in, then give them this form for leaving a review. And then it just ends. And so nothing happens if you're not logged in. And what we want to do here is have an alternate where if you're not logged in, it shows something else. So down here on this closing EJS syntax with the closing curly bracket for this if statement, we'll go ahead and modify it to have an else and then an open curly bracket, which then of course needs to have a closing curly bracket inside the EJS syntax. So we added else, open curly bracket, uh, left the original closing EJS tag, and then we have an open close EJS syntax here, no equal sign, this is just logic. And we put the closing curly bracket. Now, anything that we put in between the else and this closing set of tags is going to be visible to anyone who is not logged in, anyone who is not a current user with a session. So inside of here, we're gonna do an anchor tag. And inside the href for the anchor tag, we are going to put a link to forward slash login. Make this a little less distracting. Okay. So here we have this anchor tag with a href to login, which is great. But what we want to do is pass some information to the login get page that says, hey, we are coming from a campground and that's where we want to be redirected to after we've been logged in. And so what we can do here is we can say question mark, which indicates that what comes after the question mark is going to be a query string, which is just a way to pass information through the URL. And so we can call this something like 
return to or redirect to, uh, let's go ahead and just call it return to with capital T equals, and now let's put in the URL that we want to return to. So in this case, slash campgrounds slash, and then we're going to use the EJS output syntax. So you have that equal sign in there. And we'll do a campground dot underscore ID, and then just close that EJS syntax. So this is what your anchor tag should look like. And we want inside of between the opening and closing anchor tag uh, tags, we want to put leave a review. And then let's give it a class. So on that opening anchor tag class, let's say, or op opening tag for the anchor tag, let's say class is equal to, and inside the double quotations, we'll say btn, btn dash lg, which stands for large, and then btn dash primary and save this. So take a quick look. This is what you want yours to look like inside of this else block, right beneath where we have the opening if for showing the form when you are logged in. Again, this is inside the show EJS file in your campgrounds views directory. So if we head back over to our running application and refresh, now when we are not logged in, we have this leave a review button. And if you click it, it takes you to the login page. But if you look up at the URL, it has this question mark return to is equal to forward slash campgrounds forward slash. And then you can see dynamically we've embedded the ID of the campground that we want to redirect to. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and use that information to redirect our user. So we've gone from the show page to the login page. So on the login page, if that query string exists, the return to query string, which it won't always exist, right? If you just click on the login button, that's totally separate from clicking on leave a review. They both go to the same place, but the login button does not give you that additional query string to redirect you back to the campground. So let's head over to our controllers for users.js and scroll up to our login. So here we have module exports render login. This is the method that handles the rendering of the login. And so here we can check and see if rec.query. I think we called it return to. Let's see if that query string exists. And if it does, what we want to do is take that information and add it somehow to something that will be available to us whenever we get to the next method, which is the posting from the login form. So over here, when you enter in your credentials and you click login, that sends a post request. Well, we need to take this information that we've received here in this query string and pass it along to that post request. And because HTTP by default is stateless, meaning every new request is essentially agnostic of the previous one, unless you add some information in there or tweak the configuration to make it knowledgeable of what happened before it, we have to figure out some way to pass this information along to that next request. So what we can do is we can say, hey, if this thing exists, then go ahead and assign it to the session. And the session will be maintained from here until right before we log in. And then whenever we log in, of course, it's going to uh, delete it and make it unusable to us. So here we say, if it exists, then rec.session. And we'll just call it return to is equal to rec.query.return to. And so again, the rec.query is only available for this request response cycle from getting the login page. The moment you submit the form, it goes to another request response cycle that no longer has that rec.query information. But now that we've added it to the session, this is something that will persist between the login page and the, the processing of the login information, which is a separate request. Okay, so you can see some remnants of the old code over here in the method below it, module.exports.login. Again, we're inside of the controllers, users.js file. And so here you can see it's assuming that you've already logged in successfully and then it's sending the redirect URL equal to rec.session.return to, or if that doesn't exist and is falsy, it just sends you back to slash campgrounds. And so the problem was is that this method is the last in a line of chained methods or middlewares. And by the time you get here, rec.session.return to no longer equals whatever you set it to previously, and that's because of passport. And so what we can do is we'll just 
head on over to routes users.js and we can see we have our get users render login and then we have a post for the login route and the first thing it does is it authenticates the user by their username and password and then the last thing it does is it executes that users.login which is what we were just looking at this right here and so the problem is is that this passport.authenticate messes up our session because it creates a new session new ID for the logged in user and so we need some middleware to happen right here before this to check and see if there's a return to so we'll go ahead and plug in check return to right here so right before passport.authenticate inside of the post line we say check return to in camel case so capital R capital T now this doesn't exist yet this method does not exist so let's copy its name and let's add it to our middleware so first we need to pull it in from our middleware we're kind of working backwards here but that's okay so we're going to destructure check return to from and we're going to require the directory that we're in we're going to go up one directory out of routes and we're going to look for a file called middleware.js and then we're going to assume that this file has a method that's being exported from it called check return to so again you'll want that check return to because once we save this file and head over to our middleware.js file we now need to create that middleware all right so at the very bottom of all these module.exports let's go ahead and add a brand new one and so we'll say module.exports dot and then the name of the function check return to is equal to and this arrow function needs three arguments rec for request res for response and next so that we can invoke the next middleware in this uh, line of or chain of middlewares now if we open it up basically what we're doing here is we want to check and see if the session contains something called return to if it does then what we want to do now is we want to add it to res.locals and so res.locals is going to create a local variable but it's also a little trick that allows us to transfer or share information from one middleware to the next within a single request response cycle so at this point we've gone from the show page of the campground when we weren't logged in we went via the button for leaving a review we went to the login page we entered our information and pressed submit and that submits a post request so now we're in that post request request requ a little bit we're in that post requests request response cycle and we're at the very beginning of it this is the very first middleware that's going to get run other than the middleware that's uh, in app.js but you don't have to worry about that and so this is the first one that gets run in this middleware chain and we're going to check and see if there's anything on the session and the reason we're doing it here is because the next function in the line is that passport.authenticate which is going to get rid of our session and so we can't check for it after which is how we did it previously and why it no longer works we have to check for it before so we're saying if rec.session.return to then res.locals.return to is equal to rec.session.return to and so this looks kind of similar to what we did before but before we said hey is it on the query string if it's on the query string then put it on the session now we're saying hey is it on the session if it's on the session put it on the locals and so we take it off rec.session and we put it on res.locals and no matter what happens we want to go ahead and invoke next and so putting next with the parentheses will allow us to go from this middleware check return to to the next middleware in line and so if we head over to our routes you can see check return to will now go next to passport.authenticate which authenticates the user and goes next to users.login so if we go back to our users.js in the controllers directory and go down to our login method here we've made it all the way to the end of the line and this is where we want to redirect our user to either the show page for the campground if that's where they came from originally or all the campgrounds if they're just logging in for the first time so the redirect URL here is looking for rec.session.return to which at this point has been removed but 
what we did is we put it on res, not rec, dot locals dot return to. And so we're saying redirect URL is equal to res dot locals dot return to or campgrounds. And then here we delete the session. We don't have to do that any longer, so we can get rid of that. And we do a res dot redirect to the redirect URL. All right, so if I haven't made any mistakes, then this should work for us. So with our server running, let's head back over to the campgrounds directory or the campgrounds route. And you can see we have login and register, which means we're not logged in. So you're just perusing as a guest. You go to a campground and you decide that you want to leave a review. You click leave a review. It takes you to the login page. It has information about the page you just came from in the query string. You log in successfully and it redirects you back to that campground. So now you can leave a review. So if we log out and we just go to the login page, there's no information about a previous campground because we just want to go back to all the campgrounds. And so now if we log in successfully from here, it takes us back to forward slash campgrounds. And that is how you create uh, a button that allows you to log in and then get redirected back to the campground in question. So it's a lot to take in. You might want to watch the video twice and slow it around around some parts until you can digest everything. But basically just to review, a not logged in user goes to a campground, decides they want to leave a review, clicks leave a review. That goes to the login page, but that button that sends you to the login page also has some information in the URL about the page we just came from. When you go to the login page, we always check to see if that information is there. If it's not, that's fine. We don't do anything. If it is, then we go ahead and assign that information to the session. That allows us to maintain that information between the page loading and you submitting the form, which then executes a new request. In that new request that happens, we also check to see now if that information is maintained on the session. We do that before we log you in because the session gets kind of messed around with whenever you do log in. And so if that information does exist, we put it on a local variable, which allows us to pass it through the middleware chain all the way to the very end. So even after you've logged in, we're no longer worried about the session. We're checking to see if that local variable exists. If it does exist, we take that URL and we redirect to it. If it doesn't exist, then we know that we did not come from a campground and we just redirect back to all the campgrounds. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and we'll catch you all in the next video.